Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Garrett Fuller with Foundation Software. Of course, thanks for uh, joining me today for a, a brief review of Foundation. Uh, the title for today's webinar is Job Cost Accounting in Action. So we will primarily focus on those key features of our construction accounting platform. Um, I like to, to essentially dive in pretty quick just to make best use of everybody's time. A couple quick points um, on the uh, go to meeting go to webinar, I should say, control panel, there's an area for questions. Please feel free to ask whatever you'd like. I'll do my best to answer those throughout the overview. Anything that might need a little bit more attention, um, for sure I'll I'll reach out uh, directly to help with, with questions. Um, another high level statement, you know, big picture overview, really good uh, approach to just giving a, you know, big picture feeling of what we do, right, with our software and the and the solutions that we offer, and then one-on-one -on -one demonstrations. Not to overly push that because we don't, but it's the best way to see how the fit is and to make sure specific needs and features are addressed for each company. Um, yeah, so at the very top, that's our core classics, right? So we've been doing this close to 40 years, and I like to point out a few key things like that: our history of business. Um, about 40 years um, doing this. We've got about 350 employees, um, roughly 7,000 contractors using foundation. Um, everything we do is in-house, support, training, that's really unique in our niche, doing everything direct. Um, and I like to just point out a couple of those things as we dive in. But yeah, as I said, the main top area, that's our classic core base package. And we're gonna focus a lot on that. We do have optional modules. Since we work with so many different types of contractors, both specialty and general contractors, those middle modules there are essentially optional. So they're a la carte, so to speak. You know, if somebody has uh, equipment, they may need that module to track their equipment. If somebody has a service department, you know, say for a mechanical company or HVAC, maybe, maybe that's a nice piece for them to include with the rollout of the program. Um, but that section's the optional items and you know, there's definitely um, some nice features that are included with the base. This bottom area has a report writer that's drop and drag. Same thing, we have a drop and drag form designer, part of the core package or security, of course, where each person can determine, I should say each company can determine what each user can see and do to a very detailed level. Now, one of the key things a lot of companies are looking for as they make a potential change is getting into the uh, job cost, right? and making sure that that's something that's um, focusing on for them. So I'm going to start there. We're going to go through some job costing, and I was hesitating for a second to make sure my audio was good. Now, on, the, on this screen here, this is part of our base system, and this is called our executive dashboard. It's just one nice piece we include with the core package. So whether it's an executive or a day-to-day -day user, they can get a high-level view of of the system, right? The company, what the health of the company is, profitability from both the financial and job costing perspective. So all the day-to-day -day accounting entries are being done and I'm not minimizing that. We're gonna take a look at some of those pieces. That's all feeding real time our job costing. So these are some of my active projects as a user, right? And, and at this point I'm seeing what my total costs are compared to those estimates, contract amount compared to what we build, um, percentage of completion on each job as an example. And you know you could drill down really anywhere, click on a project, uh, maybe dive into the total cost. I'm just gonna do kind of a general drill down and um, jump into a traditional report with that basic starting information. So again, this is showing here our estimated and actual profit. Um, anything blue in our software lets you uh, drill down, just indicates you can click on. And for the most part, everything's alphanumeric, jobs, vendors, customers, cost codes. Um, so people can structure that differently. But you know, from this top-down view of our projects, if I wanted to see one further, you would simply click it. And at this point, we can see where we're sitting at on that job as it's progressing or of course at completion. Again, still, still somewhat of a, a summary view of that data. And we can get into some of the weeds here in a minute. So at this screen, we're seeing our profit on that project, what the contract summary is with our change orders broken out, commitments. So that's, a, a, again, a high level view of our committed cost on that job, which is any purchase orders or subcontracts that we've uh, issued. And, you know, of course, we can see what we've been billed and have the backup detail on that. 
So this job, um, we're looking at about 200,000 right now for current cost, right? And so if I click into that detail, in my play company, that's gonna take me to a breakdown of the $200,000 um, by the activities, or as we call cost codes for that project. Okay, so, payroll costs, these costs. Yeah, so somebody's asking um, real quick with payroll costs. Yeah, any of these, this, these costs are a summation of AP, right? Material costs, subcontract costs, payroll. We do an absolutely fantastic job of payroll in our software. We also offer payroll processing as well. So of our clients, a lot of them are doing payroll in-house, of course, because our system's designed to do that. But then uh, we have a few thousand of our clients enter their time cards, and then we take over and do the rest. We pay their taxes. We do their quarterly returns or W-2s. We act as their payroll provider to get that way. The end result is as we click into some of these costs on a project, I always have that labor and the associated burden with that labor in our system, regardless if they're doing their own payroll in-house or having maybe our payroll service, which is, again, us, take that piece of it for them. Because for a lot of contractors, that's one of the most critical costs to track, right? I mean, of course, GCs, it's, it's, it's more of the subcontracts, potential material, but that labor is such a key component to the project. So that's flowing into here from our payroll module. So as I expand down on these sample cost codes, and these vary by company. Some companies don't use cost codes. They may just track total labor, total material, you know, for, for example, that big bucket data, where others might have things like this or framing, drywall or concrete or electrical, right? Whatever those components are of their project. Now, when a job is set up, we're able to take that data and import, right? So we can take an estimate from Excel and import it. We have a basic estimate feature in our software. There's a lot of industry specific estimating systems. Some of them are specific to trades. We own, for example, McCormick, which is an electrical mechanical estimating system, but the same note we can import from a third party one or Excel. Um, now, all of these reports that I'm showing, these are just the preloaded reports right out of the bat, right? And there's probably 40 to 50 preloaded cost reports. Lots of summary level, detail level, variance, production reports, percent complete reports. So great, right? That's the good news. You don't have to make anything per se, but you can, and it's genuinely not that hard to do that. I used to do a lot of training and support many, many years ago, and that is not an area that's scary to get used to as far as the custom report writer. It's not like crystal reports. It's nothing close to that complex. So I've clicked into labor, right? Like, hey, where's that $4,000 coming from? It just pushed me to that backup behind it, the time card detail. So again, just giving an example of hopefully this being the easy part is, is, is getting into the data, right? As things are progressing, I should say as jobs are progressing, hey, where's that cost coming from? Where are we at with this? You know, what's happening here? We can have quick visibility of that information and identify, right, the classics of like, where are we at? Why is this, why is this a problem? Or does it look like it's going to be a problem? Now, I clicked in the material cost and then kept drilling down to where I pulled up the invoice that was associated with that material cost, which a lot of people do going paperless in our system. Um, and real quick note as we jump out of here in this initial starting point, um, that burden is your actual payroll burden, right? FICA, FUTA, SUDA, workers comp, fringes. If I didn't make note of that, that's something worth mentioning. So again, your cost structure is up to each company as far as do they use cost codes or not? Do they just use cost types or cost classes? Do they have additional layers of breakdown in their job costing? Maybe. Um, so again, lots of other job reports will take some uh, views of others. Change order management. Um, just quickly pointing that out in a basic sense, we of course can track change orders on a job. So here we can see the initial contract amount, the change orders that were approved, and that total revised contract. So we can always see as things progress, you know, for change orders, once they're approved like this group here for this project, that's moving the, the final updated contract and estimate with those numbers. I'm not, I can still track pending and rejected, for example, they're just not moving that total. Financial summaries, you know, at the end of the day, we're still doing classic accounting, right? Uh, balance sheets, income statements, bank reconciliation, journal entries. We get lots of referrals from uh, construction specific CPAs and CPA firms. Um, but obviously the, the, the value in our system isn't just the accounting, it's the rest of the construction elements that come with it. Uh, WIP report, another kind of classic report um, that a lot of contractors need. Some call it a uh, over under billing. Um, 
some call it a bonding report. Um, that's just you know bending a terminology, but again, a nice traditional uh, preloaded report helping companies with that type of format. You could even edit or make modifications to this if needed, um, with or without our help. Again, because we we always walk everybody through a transition with their dedicated trainer. You know that covers anything from you know getting data imported from say QuickBooks or maybe an older construction system that's not supported any longer, setting everything up, testing everything out, you're 100% walk through that. And then again, there's our live phone support for ongoing help along with webinars, user guides, you know, conferences, you name it. Retainage management, another very basic but helpful thing that's part of our system, holding retainage, tracking it, releasing it when necessary. So again, this, this dashboard tool, I could spend a while in it truthfully, but just wanted to give a, a quick view of some of the things that we're providing in the back end. And, and as I said, there's there's a lot of other job reports. There's you know, super detailed ones. There's some other summary level. These are preloaded job cost reports. I've got variance reports. I've got summary level. Um, any of these reports I can run not only by job, I can run job cost reports by maybe customer, project manager type of job by division or profit center. So whether it's condensed or detailed, again, giving the visibility of the data is there and and that's you know the win-win at the end of the day is you know as we do our day-to-day -day entry, it's it's helping the operation side, you know, getting that information immediately. Now in a job record, I want to throw throw up a project really quick and point out a couple things. So I won't enter a new one just for time I'll pull up one that's existing. I may change some things, but you know, here's our job, there's our customer. These are alphanumeric job numbers, project manager, um, geographic areas. These are just samples. If it gives people better visibility of that data, I can run job reports by job, by customer, job type. I've had people come up with anything you could think of from you know, hospitals, remodels, tenant improvement, multifamily, you know, bridges, roads, you name it. Because again, it gives them better visibility to pull out reports based on that type of information. Um, tax tables, we update tax tables automatically for payroll purposes. Multi-state payroll, multi-local is, is pretty basic for us to handle. Um, certified payroll, when you need it, great, we do it. Regardless if it's a union company or not, um, we do both union, non-union payroll extremely well. Certified payroll, the job record can hold pay rates for the job. And that can dictate when the time card's being entered, it'll populate the right rate for the person based on the classification that they're in on that prevailing wage job. All those weird curveballs are in effect to, you know, if their pay rate's higher than the prevailing wage rate, they'll get the higher rate. It'll calculate the, the proper fringe. Now I can manually throw in a contract and an estimated cost. Retainage, I had set the 10% here. And the idea is to whatever degree we want to break down our job cost, I would break down that budget. To that level right if we're using cost codes great i would say how much the estimated labor and material etc is by each category of the job or cost code or just as a whole total estimated labor total estimated material that just depends on how detailed our job costing structure needs to be per company again that can be imported from third-party estimating tools we do also offer a couple again standard uh, industry estimating options we have a basic estimate feature within our uh, system as well Again, some people need a very robust traditional estimating software. Some are good with just a basic piece like we have. And I can also track bids. So I can track projects before they're awarded and, and, and if they're lost, right, for bid history, win-loss information. And then this can convert to an actual project if it is in fact awarded. But I can also go to this proposal screen, break down items, labor, you know, fixed labor rates, markups on other items. I can send out proposals or estimates and again, convert that to a project if it is awarded. So if I wanna start at that bid phase, we can do that and track all of that within the application or just go start it at the job being awarded. Now, I'm gonna throw in just a quick time card in payroll um, and we do have a mobile application as well. So a lot of our clients uh, use our mobile app for field entry, whether it's an individual person doing their own time or a uh, foreman doing a, a group entry, for example, out in the field. Now I'm making a basic approach here where I'm putting in a couple jobs for the week with eight hours a day. That's me being just not lazy per se, but just trying to be efficient for the run through. But it doesn't matter how many line items, right? You could have multiple rows on one day. 
Um, if, no, if you're not tracking cost codes, that would just default in as labor. Overtime can auto calculate based on overtime rules, but I can also select any other type of code, reimbursements, mileage, vacation, bonus. Um, my pay rates came in uh, for me, right? Because this, this person is on a prevailing wage job, so he's getting a different pay rate that day. Um, if they change classifications, if I said, hey, this day was a foreman, the rate already cleared out because it's checking to see if there's a different rate, and there was between a labor and a foreman on that job. And maybe the fringe is gonna calculate, right? Which it would. Um, so again, these are some basic things. Workers comp is gonna calculate for us behind the scenes, maybe based on the type of work they're doing or the classification that they're in. There's a lot in the back end of payroll setup to make sure things are working right. And we do test payroll runs with each company before their first real one to make sure things are successful. Um, again, and um, real quick, I wanna pull up the mobile app. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time in it, but this is an opportunity for, and this is our mobile app. If somebody's using a third party one and wants to keep it, we can import from third party mobile apps. The advantage to ours, of course, is it's ours and it's directly connected with, you know, if I'm an employee and I open my app, whether it's a smartphone, a um, tablet, right? E either way, Android, Apple, if I'm Nick Zimmerman, whoever that is, when I open my app, it shows me, I pick a job that I'm on and I can restrict to certain jobs for each person and just clock in. So at a minimum, they pick the job and clock in, or if I'm using cost codes, I pick the job and cost code and clock in. Straight time or regular wages can just be the default and kind of lock in there. Um, and then they could clock out anytime or switch to another activity. Other companies say, no, they don't clock in. Person just goes in. Now I can see everybody because that's in my play environment. But if I'm Rick, when I open it, my name's there, I can't change it. There's the job I'm on, here's what I'm doing for how many hours, right? So they can either clock in and out or manually enter hours or select the start and stop time. Or it could be more of a um, foreman approach where a lead person goes in, sees the employees on the job, right? And sees the activities being performed and they can enter the appropriate amount of hours to each person to each cost code for that day. Um, there's opportunities to put in material, notes, quantities, equipment through the mobile application as well. So there's more things you can do from the field, but that's just one key thing. And that's just gonna avoid that double entry where all that time just gets pushed right back into payroll for us to review it before we finalize things. Um, so there's more to the payroll process, right? Verifying all the reports, but if somebody's doing payroll in house, I mean, you have your you know 401k, workers comp, minority compliance, ACA reporting when needed, federal tax filings, local, state, union reporting, W-2s, W-3s. Um, I'll run one standard union report where I'm showing one local with the employees, their details for that month, then a summary of the total amount due for those deductions and fringes for that union. Um, certified payroll, we do printed and electronic. Electronic are those more current, you know, LCP tracker, DIR, the ones that people have to upload. Otherwise, any of the unique formats that exist, whether it's a classic federal format or city or state specific format, they're there, right? You just pick the one you need and it populates it with the data from payroll. Again, or we uh, populate you know, one of the electronic ones, the uploads that can go to those various agencies. Um, now, I, I will show real quick with accounts payable and POs, I'm gonna throw in a purchase order and I know I appreciate I'm talking quick, I get it. Um, now the, the the idea with the purchase orders and subcontracts, of course, we can create the actual documents from our system, right? The contract or PO. But I always point out the three key things it's going to do from a basic level is one, track committed cost, right? So in this case, if I put in this uh, purchase order um, or subcontract, you pick what it is. Regardless of which type, it's uh, going to show ten grand right now on that job as a committed cost. I mean, if it's just a purchase order for material, not for a job, that's okay too for people keeping track of an on-hand stock of inventory. And we can break down the details on these as well, which we can we can look at. So it's gonna be a committed cost immediately. Um, it'll yell at you if there's any expired workers' comp or insurance certificates, which is nice. And then when we get to accounts payable in a minute, it, it'll prevent us from being billed for more than that, that value. It's gonna make sure things are in check. Um, now, again, I can, make these detailed doesn't that just be a lump sum value maybe have items broken down or you know manually type in line items if that's needed but you know the forms again customizable those can be emailed out on the fly if that's helpful um, but it's giving us that visibility of 
committed cost on our job reports before their actual cost, as well as running committed cost uh, reporting within that specific module too. All right, so here's a subcontractor and the amount of that you know, uh, commitment, what they build us, what's left, right? Just the visibility of that is there. Now, if I go to AP and we put an invoice in, which is pretty straightforward, um, you know, that's whether it's a cell phone bill or material or a subcontract, right? You pick the vendor. If there's a job, you pick the job. If there's no job, there's no job, that's okay. And if there's multiple jobs, the bottom area of the screen can have as much information as we, as we need. Um, so you'd link the purchase order, and then and if you have one, right, to attach. If you don't, that's fine, but it pulled over that remaining committed cost, right? So if I was overbilled by that vendor, by that sub or supplier, whatever it is, it's gonna tell me, hey, you, you're, you're over, you know, stop, basically, you can't do that. Now you can have different levels of, of uh, restriction on that. Maybe, maybe it should just be a warning, right, for one company. Maybe somebody else like mine, it's stopping me and I can go, you know, research what's going on. Does it need a change order? What's, what's, what's happening? For companies that want to go paperless throughout the system, not just here in AP, but AP is a pretty classic area to do that. You can hit import image like I did. This window would pop up wherever I press this button you know, an employee record, job records, on a purchase order here in AP, you know, I'm just going to hit my folder where I stored some AP invoices and I'm going to pull one in. So those are invoices that either you've scanned or they've come to you already on an email as a PDF, which is probably easier, right? Because then you'd have to scan anything, but I pulled it in. So now this image is stuck per se in the system. It's part of the back end of our program. Maybe I'm looking at that on another screen if that's helpful. But now that's part of a of this transaction, and that's why I have that little blue file cabinet to see at any time. That can also potentially route for approval. So if, if if that's helpful, the invoice may route to a project manager or maybe an executive of some sort, maybe based on the dollar value, or any invoice for job A goes to Sarah or something like that. So the approver would get notification. And then we can, that person approving can come in and see a pending list of their invoices where they can individually look at that document, the invoice, right, that was, that was sent and they make sure that it's coded properly. Did it go to the right phase or cost code? And if not, they can revise it. So it gives that visibility of it an opportunity to make sure it was coded properly before it's committed to general ledger and job costing. Um, now in accounts payable, of course, you can cut checks, you know, maybe pay vendors electronically. I don't want to dismiss that, but I'm going to kind of skip the, 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 the steps on that. It's just a list of invoices. You check boxes in order to create a check run. There are lien waivers. There's 1099s, um, customizable, partial, final waivers, if that's something that's helpful. Um, now, while super quick, what we've done is, you know, we, we, we have a job. We've, you know, got some labor and burden and hours pushed from payroll whether that's done in house or maybe, you know, foundation's payroll service taking over the tax filings and checks and that same end result though, GL and job costing have that payroll data properly. We've got maybe material and subcontract cost hitting our job from AP. And, and you know, it's for some companies, maybe there's equipment cost, right? That might've been entered in with payroll. Maybe we entering the equipment usage separate from payroll, but you know, maybe that's feeding job cost. But from a traditional sense in the base system, we'd be at a point where we can bill. Now in standard AR, we have progress billings or AIAs, and then just next to it, enter invoices to kind of cover anything else. Standard contract billings, maybe a small TNM or extra, but I'll go to the AIA feature because that's pretty specific. Um, and I'm just pulling up a sample project here and, a, and a, another sample schedule of values. This could be you know, a few hundred line items if it needs to be. <clears throat> I'm just gonna throw in some sample percentages here. Uh, we're on app one, right? So there's nothing in previous yet. I'm going to hold retainage that set uh, was at 10% on the job record. So we're going to hold 10% retainage, which I can release any time the, as the job progresses, whether it's partial or final. Um, now we do preload the standard G702, G703. There's other options there. Um, but I'll go ahead and kind of briefly scroll down here. So we see our values and you, you could send it out and kind of wait for some for approval on it. I'm just gonna go ahead and post it, meaning commit it to the system, assuming we're good. 
So that's just flowing throughout the system. It's updated the job with its revenue. You know, AR is broken down from retainage, which is good. We break those out separately, but it's pushed it into the right areas of the system. GL, AR, and the revenue went to job costing. So now if I pull that um, job back up in our, in our AIA screen, we're now on the app number two, right? Previous is, is, is growing as things progress. But again, I can clear retainage anytime. I can hit rollback if I need to go backwards and make a correction. <clears throat> and we try to do our best with hopefully making these corrections not too scary. All I did was hit rollback and hit OK, and we're now pushed back to app one the way I left it so we can make revisions. Now, behind the scenes, there is the audit trail. It shows who did it when, right? That's not hidden, but to the end user, I didn't have to you know, press 50 different buttons to get backwards and make a correction there. Um, again, there's other standard invoicing options. We do uh, have another two billing modules that are optional, TNM, which is for larger cost plus billing situations. Um, small TNM or extras are typically handled in standard AR. Unit price billing is kind of like an AIA, a progress billing, but it's focused on quantity complete, which that's a specific module to accommodate that. Now in GL, I mean, at the end of the day, you're not losing, you know, even from basic accounting solutions, we still have journal entries, right? <clears throat> Reconciliations for checking, savings, credit cards. Of course, your audit level reporting, financials, right? Balance sheets, income statements, customizable um, financials when need be. Um, divisionalized financials. Some people have profit centers where they might see, you know, our commercial division, our residential division, our service division broken down within the within a, the, the individual profit loss report. Um, now, as, as you know, there's other there's other pieces here, right? We've got um, scheduling features, imaging we touched on briefly, there's a dispatch module. Foundation offers as well um, more of a formal project management side of things. And, and I wanted to focus primarily today on the, right, on the title that we had at hand, um, job cost accounting, right? Um, but for a lot of companies, this sits right with it from the operations side. So just on an awareness level, this, this solution is called Project HQ. And this is our this is our formal project management piece that's tied together with foundation proper, right? So it's the same ecosystem, same backend database. You know, the jobs that are sitting here, those are just jobs in foundation. That's how they got here. Uh, but it gives an opportunity for more uh, depth on the project management side where our base system does a fantastic job accommodating all the job cost needs, change order control, purchase order and subcontract management. This kind of builds off those um, operations side uh, um, elements and provide submittals, RFIs, meeting minutes, maybe punch lists, additional opportunities to maybe enter a change order from outside the core application, maybe enter in a committed cost, like a PO from the field and sync these, uh, these items back into our core application. So I'm maybe a, an operations person not taking up a seat right in the core core accounting area or maybe you just don't want them there anyway well that's fine maybe i am using you know project hq to enter a change order and submit it right back into the core accounting application for review so it's giving us the opportunity to do that uh, maybe they maybe the field operations person is going to enter in their uh, aia percentages of completions from here that feed into our standard aia piece they can create daily logs they can manage contacts um, see the team related to that project and send out emails, which are also tracked. File management, right? The storage facility for drawings, pictures, videos, making that part of the application as well. Um, scheduling features, right? So there's a few different scheduling opportunities that we have within, within foundation um, with different intent, right? Different concepts behind them, but I can schedule projects and, and employees, equipment, Right, manage those resources properly and see where people are scheduled to do what. Um, have the opportunity for employees to have visibility of their schedule. They can open up their own calendar, see where they're supposed to go real time, what they're supposed to be doing, who's going there with them. So there's there's more pieces that we do provide in addition to the core construction accounting that we started 40 years ago. And I also always want to stress to people. It's, it's a very good approach for, for a lot of companies to start with the classics, right? And build off of that as they grow within our uh, platform. Others start with a few other pieces or a lot, right? Just depending on where they're at as a business and what they're ready for. 
Um, again, I know time goes quick. Um, I appreciate everybody jumping on. I will go through questions and, and get back to people that I, if there's something that I didn't answer as we were going through it, I was trying to peek over at the questions um, as things progress. There will be a recording sent out to everybody who attended. Um, so that will be sent out for, well, not just attended, but for people that uh, registered as well. Um, thanks everybody for jumping on. I uh, hope it was informative and please reach out anytime. Um, feel free to jump on our, our website. Uh, it's foundationsoft.com. Um, reach out to, oh, kind of jumped into another screen there. Uh, Trying to get my go to webinar controls out of the way. Here we go. But yeah, foundationsoft.com. This number right up top here, 800 246 0800. That's our sales uh, department. Nothing hard. They would just ask questions as far as what, you know, what are you looking for? Do you want to take a look? Do you just have questions and then coordinate an overview if that's helpful? Feel free to reach out to me directly if that's something that would be helpful. Um, my name is Garrett. And uh, yeah, same number can be uh, dialed and asked for me, and I'll do my best to help. Thanks, everybody.